Hello and welcome to Blender Video Tutorial number 19 and this is an introduction to uh, animation. Okay, and our animation we have several elements that take place to uh, move objects. Okay, it's uh, considered to be keyframing an object. Okay, and uh, keyframing consists of telling where the object is and uh, and what frame it's at. Okay, so to kind of view where the uh, keyframing is going to be located, go to and split your area and go to IPO Curve Editor. It's the second one from 3D View. All right, uh, we're on frame one, so it'll be located right here for frame one down here. These are frames, and this is the location. Uh, you can get in more detail with this, but do that when we're in more advanced stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it over here. Hit I, location, rotation, and scale. Okay, so it's frame at frame one. It's located here. I'm going to hit the up arrow a couple times to bring our frame up. Uh, I'm going to grab it, put it over here. Hit I again, and loc uh, location, rotation, scale. Hit up arrow a couple times and bring it down here. I'm gonna hit I once again and locate it here. All right, so if we go to frame one, just drag and bring it over and hit Alt A. You'll watch it go around and perform its animation. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now that you know how the object kind of moves around by keyframing it in its particular frame we'll learn a little bit more about the IPO window okay uh, each IPO window has or well each IPO curve has its own data such as location and time okay and the uh, scale kinda it does have its own location but in a more advanced way it's uh, how large and how small the object gets from its starting point. Okay, so that's how kind of how scale works, and rotation works as location. So let's begin on learning how to edit this IPO. Okay, select your uh, IPO, which it'll tell you which one's selected by a uh, black outline around. So select here. Okay, we're gonna select this with right click and hit tab just like in uh just like in your object window or three D view. Okay, so you can grab these handles and move them around. Grabbing handles and kinda hit the G key and it'll smooth the the uh curve out. You can bring it up. Or you can select the middle of the handle or in between the handles and move the entire thing. Now, if you go in front of something and behind something, um, it'll throw it in or out. So you can see the lines shifting uh, in direction. That's because you can't have this located at frame 30 uh, and located in negative 10 because you can't reverse animation. I, I don't know. Just you'll understand it once you uh, experiment around or just don't even mess with it okay just try to prevent going backwards because you can't do that it won't work right you can put it back there and click OK and, and you'll run an animation but it, be, it won't be the same thing you just logged in here so back in object mode uh, there's a couple ways these lines work when you animate an object by default It'll be uh, the smooth line, okay? It won't be uh, jagged, see? Player animation, you can see how it slows down, speeds up. Alright. Uh, we can select everything with A and go to curve and extend mode. And you can see constant, extendation, cyclic, and cyclic expression. It's cyclic. It goes on and on forever. Okay, it'll always just continue to go around, start over, and around. 
start over. Now, uh, you can edit these around to where it doesn't look like it's jumping here. You can edit these uh, handles and stuff. Uh, another thing you can do is with the curve, all the curves selected, you can go to interpretation and you have constant and linear and bizarre. We'll go to, uh, oops, and hit uh, linear. Linear is exact location. Wherever you hit that keyframe in is where it's going to go. So we'll demonstrate. Okay, it's more of a jump. It's not so much as a. Uh, Calculate it out and round. Do this again, except for with constant. We'll see it just goes up to the point, waits to the next point, and then goes back down. So, you can watch this. Very stupid. I wouldn't sit and watch a movie that does that. Okay, so, anyways, there's our basic animation, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, how we would do this. Uh, put this into a movie file so that we're not rendering uh, a bunch of pictures. I'm just going to track this camera to this. So, Control T, Control T, and zero. So, uh, hold. okay, it doesn't really matter about the animation. Just this is just for um, an idea. So, I'm just going to have this here. Okay, if you watch, there's a um, the a black square. Where my cursor is, and it's got frames. If you watch, it has a when it stops, it has a two and a fifty under it. That means it's stopping on two hundred and fifty. So it'll stop right here. Okay. You can tell by going to the. Uh, let's go to the renders button window. Right here, it's the uh, mountain again. You can tell by how many frames you're doing by the an animation button start and end can change this around to say 50 or something and the last thing we're going to discuss is how to render your uh, animation into a movie file so where it says JPEG which is your basic rendering go to uh, AVI codec AVI JPEG or AVI raw uh, you can mess around with these other ones but just go to AVI JPEG you can set the quality values and size and parameters in there and then go to render and render animation okay and one last thing is when you render your uh, animation your file or your animation will go to this file it's the very first one and if you click on this oh, okay you can choose your directory okay and once you've chosen your directory and you can go ahead and render it and you can find your movie file in that uh, directory when, you, when it's done uh, rendering. Okay, and that will conclude this tutorial.